I want to point out that on the Creationist Museum, just anywhere from a few inches to a few feet underneath the topsoil, you can find these world famous fossils. Ken Ham ought to be excavating it and putting these all on display for the public to see. He wouldn't, all he has to do is get a bulldozer and a garden hose and he can wash these out and he can show off these world famous fossils. And that's what he ought to be doing. So he has many acres to show off to the public these world famous fossils. And he ought to be jumping up and down and taking advantage of that. This one rock has about 22 seashells on it and has about two dozen snail shells on it. This is a, uh, this is a neat concentration of sea life. You can find rock layers plentiful anywhere in the Cincinnati Tri-State region and Ken ought to have something like this on display. He can excavate it, put it on display for the public to see and touch. Here are some rocks that I have around my home. They are filled with uh, all types of seashells and I encourage any creationist driving to the uh, Answers in Genesis Museum to, as they drive along Kentucky and they see the road cuts, I I encourage you to pull over, get out of your car, and look at some of these rocks. They are world famous. It will take you a mere few minutes. And look at the uh, fossils in the seashells. Look with your own eyes and see what is embedded in these f world famous limestone rocks. See some of the creatures for yourself. Just don't read about it in a book. And uh, Ask yourself why Ken Ham is not taking advantage of this wonderful natural resource to show off the evidence of Noah's, Noah's uh, flood right on his own property. Ken ought to be showcasing these for everybody to see. This type is called Platystrophia. This rock alone has over a thousand little tiny seashells. It's called Theridonta. fingernail for comparison. Here's some more Theridonta and these are these shells are open they are not whole just the halves of the shell sticking out. This type is called Dalmanella. Ken Ham ought to be excavating it and putting these all on display for the public to see. And that's what he ought to be doing. So he has many acres to show off to the public these world famous fossils. And he ought to be jumping up and down and taking advantage of that. But he's not going to do that. The reason why is because it's going to bring up too many questions. These seashells are not like modern day seashells. You do not see any modern day sea life mixed in with them. There are no modern day seashells of the same size. There are no modern day sea urchins or brain coral or starfish or fish of any type whatsoever. It brings up far too many questions that the creationist uh, customers are going to be asking. So it's not too likely that Ken Ham is going to be displaying any of the fossils on his property to the public for this very reason. Even even the scientifically challenged creationist would be able to put one and one together and realize that there's something not right with these fossils. They don't match up with the story of creation and with God making all of the sea creatures on one day. Why is it that we can't find any of the uh, modern day representatives mixed in with these? They try to make the claim, Henry Moore has tried to make the claim of hydraulic sorting, that somehow the uh, different speeds of the water, the different animals settle down at different rates and at different space intervals. Sounds good on paper, but it doesn't work in real life. There are rock layers of crinoid pieces, stem pieces. Here they are whole, and here's the heads of them. They were underwater animals. They look like flowers. They're called sea lilies or crinoids. These are rare whole ones. These are extremely common pieces. They're broken and fragmented. And I want you to think about this. Crinoids also prove that these Paleozoic fossils are not from Noah's Flood because they're all here. They're concentrated in zones. That is, 
Noah's flood cannot pick these things up from hundreds of miles away and deposit them in one small little specific location. These things lived, their bases are attached to the seafloor, even to, the, to this day. The seafloor, of course, is solidified, lithified. These pieces are, can be found attached to the seafloor. The rock representative of the seafloor, so to speak, the crinoid bases are still attached to the seafloor. They would break apart and they would, where they lived, their little pieces would fall to the ground like this. Think of it as leaves falling off a tree. How can you have these hurricane force uh, waves move all these things and then dump them in one little location? Do you see how concentrated these are? It's just incredible. They are in this position because they lived, grew, and died here, and then they were uh, fossilized. They were buried by sediment on top of them. Noah's flood would be extremely violent. These things would have been torn and ripped apart. They would not be uh, found in these lifelike positions. Now, I will mention that these fossils were buried in their position by sea storms, but it differs from the Noah's Flood myth.